If you've been following the saga of the uh, Diamond Princess, that's the cruise ship that was stocked in Yokohama and was used to quarantine some of the uh, COVID-19 patients. Um, if you've been following that, you probably know who Kentaro Iwata is. That's the professor from Kobe University who went onto the ship and then posted a YouTube video afterwards uh, criticizing the infection control practices on the ship. Uh, it resulted in a, it got a lot of coverage in the news, especially the Western news. Um, they they loved it, and it resulted in a lot of uh, articles, um, like these bureaucrats were in charge, that Japanese doctor blast ship, experts shocked, scientists decry as completely chaotic conditions. And um, my, my favorite one from Bloomberg, Professor warns of need to prevent a second Wuhan. So... Uh, this, uh, he really made it a name for himself, um, with this article he posted on YouTube on February 19th, and then he took it down the next day. Um, what hasn't gotten so much coverage, though, is that he, uh, the next day after he posted the video, he did a, uh, teleconference with the Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan. So, uh, that's, uh, Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan is a club of uh, foreign journalists who work in Japan and report on uh, Japanese matters for Western audiences. So he, he did an hour-long Skype interview with them, and he had uh, further comments on the uh, ship. And those have not really been covered in the news. Um, I'd like to play a few clips. The first uh, clip that we're going to hear is uh, his explanation of um, why he wasn't interested in the positive test results that were being reported. If, if we're, we're a few days behind the story now, but if you remember about a week ago or 10 days ago, uh, it was every day we were hearing like 100 more patients, 90 more patients, and it was being reported as though this meant there were 100 more infections, 90 more infections. Like the um, inf like the coronavirus was just spreading through the ship. Uh, so in this clip, we're going to hear him explain why he was not interested in those positive test results. On the same day, yesterday, uh, Institute of Infectious Diseases in Japan uh, published the report uh, showing the data of the uh, cruise infections. And this is what I uh, suggested over last a week or so to uh, Ministry of Health and Labor, which is the uh, uh, openness and transparency and the disclosure of the data inside the cruise ship, which was never been done. The, um, the uh, news coverage showed the number of the people who got tested and who got the positive. And you could have seen, uh, you know, the uh, today's number of tests was 66, and out of 66, 44 turned positive kind of thing. Which doesn't mean anything to me, because the uh, the date of the testing and the date of the result came in it doesn't mean anything in regards to the uh, spread of the infectious diseases inside the cruise. So what you need is the onset of the symptom of each patient who developed the coronavirus infection and the date of that. If you see the uh, curve, which is called epi curve in a professional term. Okay, the, the thing you may have not caught there, uh, right in the middle was um, he, he mentioned the epi curve. Uh, it sounded a little bit like he said epicart, but uh, he says uh, epi curve. Um, that's a... Uh, an epidemiological term for um, a graph that's created that shows the number of cases over time and this is how epidemiologists actually chart the outbreak. Uh, the, the shape of the curve can tell you the, the kind of source of the outbreak um, and also by looking at the curve uh, you can tell things like the incubation period. The CDC has um, a very nice website where they have um, a kind of learning slideshow with a little quiz at the end uh, that teaches you about different points of epidemiology. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the show notes so you can study the epicurve for yourself. 
So now that you know what the upper curve is, um, then you will distinguish between the infections occurring before February the 5th and after the February the 5th. And that is very extremely important because unless you know the fact how many secondary infection was occurring when and where, you can't really conduct a, a proper infection control management. So that was what I thought was lacking, and the thankfully uh, Institute of Infectious Diseases uh, published that yesterday morning, and turned out the uh, most of the Japanese passengers didn't have the secondary infection after February the fifth. Although uh, there were uh, infections among crews, which is likely to be a secondary transmitted. Okay, so the the next clip, uh, he's going to talk about uh, test sensitivity and the fact that the um, the, the tests are not really reliable, so that's part of the the issue that we're seeing now. Uh, people are let off the ship, they're returning to their homes. Um, as he mentions here, uh, they they really needed to be quarantined, but this isn't because, uh, quarantined in their home countries, but this isn't because the Japanese government did a poor job on the ship, it's just the, the nature of the situation, and as he mentions in this clip, um, the nature of the testing, which really cannot tell you whether the person is sick or not. Okay, one more question from AFP, and then we'll have some questions in Japanese. Yes, uh, the last question is to confirm your uh, opinion on the possibility that a negative test uh, mm -hmm. turned positive uh, uh, a week ago or some days ago. Yeah. Uh, some days later, sorry. Uh, someone, so, yeah, uh, I mean, someone who has, who has been tested negative. Yes. If you do another test one week ago, is there yeah. a risk that this test is positive? Yeah. There's always the wrongness of the test. That could be technically wrong and that could be essentially wrong. And the, uh, there's no test which is 100% accurate and 100% sensitive. sensitive. So that could be falsely negative. And we have to be aware I'll of that potential danger notes. of that. So the test negative is not a no infection. We have to know it. And the, therefore, we have to utilize the test result wisely. Excuse me. To interpret the result very accurately. Otherwise, we might release people who might have infections. So that's very important. <coughs> that may have happened because... For example, people who leave the uh, boat yesterday, yeah. some have been has been tested on 12. So yes. it means one week ago. Yeah, but to me, it doesn't matter because I, I don't care about the test result anyway, to begin with. You might have a test negative because while being infected. Also, you might have a new infect, new infections two days later. So you could have a lot of scenarios you could consider. But still, as far as you remain being wise enough to know the test negative is not a known infection, you, your decision is easy. You have to keep a watching of this pe person for next 14 days, regardless of the test result, regardless of the date of the test. That doesn't matter at all. Okay. Okay, and then uh, we have one last clip here at the end of the FCCJ interview. They allowed some Japanese questions, and one of the uh, Japanese journalists asks him about um, the sensitivity of the PCR test. So uh, the way that they're testing is uh, they swab people's uh, upper airways, and then they, they have a kind of machine that duplicates uh, DNA and RNA. So if, there's, if they swab and there's any RNA from the uh, virus in the swab, um, this machine is supposed to duplicate it uh, to the point that it's uh, detectable. Um, the gentleman from Mainichi, please, you can ask in Japanese now. ありがとうございます。日本語で質問させていただきます。はい。えっと、今の質問の関連になると思いますが、え、昨日岩田先生は、え、立憲民主党のヒアリングで、その、え、新型コロナウイルスの検査の感度は<笑> 
、えー、ほぼ30から 50% だとおっしゃったと思います。はい、May I speak in English regarding his question?、Now? Yes, please. His question was about the、uh, source of the、uh, data showing the uh, uh, PCR sensitivity of 30 to 50% I cited in the past.、Uh, I cited、uh, from the, one of the、uh, Chinese papers who described these situations in Shanghai, and the uh, doctors uh, inside the news、uh, described the sensitivity of the test, meaning the, among 100 people with disease, the test was positive from 30 to 50, namely the sensitivity of 30 to 50%. Uh, probably uh, from the, a lot of new data coming in from now on,、um, more data will come in and new sensitivity will be known. But the, largely speaking, the、uh, sensitivity is not very high in this disease. So you can't trust the negative result of this infection. You can't, I believe you said.、Um, so. What he says here in this clip is that,、um, that there's only、uh, 30% sensitivity in this chest. That's incredibly low.、Uh, I've heard、uh, some subsequent reporting that suggests that it's 70, around 70%. That's still incredibly low.、Um, the, the thing you have to understand here with the sensitivity is that、uh, 70% sensitivity. Would mean that there's a 30% chance that if somebody,、uh, if you test somebody and they're negative, that they actually have the,、um, the disease. And of course, then if you send them home,、um, you're, you're talking about a 30% chance that you're sending people home、uh, who, are, who are sick. And、uh, you can see that in Australia. What, they sent home, what, 150 people? And,、uh, They, they, they actually did quite well because I think maybe out of that 150, there were maybe the 10 who,、um, who ended up actually being sick, which is、uh, better than the 30% failure rate. But anyway.